now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, The Man Crisis. Learn why so many men are struggling to find their way in an increasingly gynocentric world in The Man Crisis. Get your copy of The Man Crisis in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. I have received new information about the mass shooting at the Molson Coors facility in Milwaukee, where five people tragically lost their lives. And it turns out that there were two incidents involving two different beta males at the Molson Coors facility, and the behaviors of both of these beta males fit right in line with the patterns and profiles I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. Now, the first incident, which many people thought what led into the mass shooting, was an individual who was terminated from his job earlier in the day. Now, this individual, after being terminated from his position from Molson Coors and escorted off the campus by security, decided to make terroristic threats to come back and harm individuals at the facility. And many people thought that because this individual made these terroristic threats, that he was the perpetrator behind the mass shooting. However, he, after being arrested, it was soon found out that he wasn't the individual behind the mass shooting and soon was let go. But when I take a critical examination of that individual, he fits the pattern and profile I talk about in the man crisis because this was an individual who did not know how to navigate through his emotions after being terminated. Because I myself, who after losing a civil service job at the City College of New York, I understand that I need to remain calm and I need to leave this facility and campus with in silence because anything I say can and will be used against me. So I understand you have even though you are losing a job, you have to maintain your discipline and self-control and walk out of that place like a man because you may put yourself at risk of losing your freedom if you get emotional and want to get into it with individuals at the company at, well, as you are being let go because if something transpires like the mass shooting which happened a few hours after this individual was terminated you can wind up being arrested and charged even though you didn't do anything. So that's why you have to navigate through your emotions when you are being let go from a position because you need to think about the long term, which is, again, your health, your safety, and your freedom. Now, the second incident which took place at the Molson Coors facility in Milwaukee was where your 51-year-old Anthony Farrow decided to return to the Molson Coors facility with a weapon, and he decided to murder five of his co-workers. Now, Anthony Farrow was a completely different individual, and he was still being employed by Molson Coors. However, the reason why Anthony Farrow wound up participating in this mass shooting fits the pattern and profile that I talk about in The Man Crisis is because your Anthony Farrow was a 51-year-old ticking time bomb. And this ticking time bomb had been simmering and boiling for years in anger as he was having an ongoing dispute and beef with numerous co-workers at the job. Now, your Anthony Farrow was a licensed electrician and as a licensed electrician with a skilled trade, he had been working at Molson Coors for 17 years. And this man had a wife and a family, and sadly, he wasn't thinking about his wife and his family because, like most beta males, he was only thinking about getting the upper hand in the ongoing beef he was having with his co-workers. Now, this is not a smart thing for any man to do in the workplace, is get into a beef with other beta male co-workers, because it's something that just you will not win. Because what's going to happen is you're going to put your livelihood at risk, and you're going to put your ability to remain employable at risk getting into it with other beta males, because 
these individuals, all they want to do is get a rise out of you, get you involved in their drama, and get you emotional enough to act out. And your Anthony Farrell, he didn't know how to navigate through his emotions in this situation because he was so caught up in his emotions regarding race that he didn't think about the big picture as related to these individuals. Now, I don't know if these individuals were white or Hispanic because oftentimes these white and Hispanic guys, what they like to start little dramas with other black co-workers and they like to start little dramas because they want to have their smooth world and it seems like these co-workers they had an issue with Anthony Farrell because he was sitting there watching video movies on his phone during the day and they took issue with that and they would do things like accusing each other of going to each other's offices and stealing tools from each other or they would mess with each other's computer equipment. Completely juvenile and unprofessional behavior that supervisors, I believe, should have done something about because when you have employees going into a back and forth like this, it shows that there is no supervisor taking charge of the situation and checking all of these individuals. Now, if these individuals, again, had an issue with Anthony Farrell, Again, they should have gone to supervision and said, okay, this individual is not working and we need to have him disciplined. But again, they're going into these back and forths because their hands are just as dirty and they want to go into these back and forths, not because this employee is being product not being productive, but because in some cases, these guys don't like the fact that there's a black man on the job and they want to push that black man out of the job so that they can have their smooth world. And this back and forth drama, this junior high school nonsense, it escalated the issues at the job. And again, your Anthony Farrell became a ticking time bomb. He had sued the company on one occasion, I believe, and he had still was trying to deal with things. And again, he felt like there was no recourse and this led to this individual simmering again and boiling in anger. And eventually, it led to him becoming more and more paranoid because he thought that the games these guys were playing on the job were leading into his home because he thought things were missing. And this case sounds like another case of another black male mass shooter that transpired, I think, a couple of months ago, where he also made these allegations that people were messing with him on the job. And what happened was he wound up losing it and wound up murdering his co-workers. And again, this is something that supervision really needs to deal with because if these guys are playing around like this and playing these stupid games, again, the company can be held liable because they're not dealing with these individuals and giving them the disciplinary action that, that that will correct their unprofessional behavior. Because if they're too busy going into these back and forths, and beta males love to go into these back and forths, then they're not really focused on their job. And it's, again, it's, it's very similar to that situation with that other black male mass shooter that transpired a few months ago, or, or this Hispanic male who decided he was going at the NYCHA housing projects who threw away an $82,000 a year job because he kept getting into back and forths. And again, it shows that these individuals, they are not really focused on taking care of business. And that's where a manager has to come in and get everybody focused on taking care of business because if there's an issue, it needs to be solved. And all of these individuals need to be put on the same page that they are on the Molson course payroll to take care of business because that's their main job. But unfortunately, no one was put on those pages. Nobody was checked. And your Anthony Farrell, again, like a beta male, simmered and boiled in anger and then eventually wound up exploding in this rage. And he wound up, as he exploded in this rage, going to this Molson Coors facility to shoot these co-workers as a way to finally solve the problems he was having on the job. 
He believed that if he destroyed these individuals' lives, he would finally get the re get these, these these individuals to stop, and he would finally get revenge on these individuals. But again, when I look at this whole situation, this was another textbook case of a beta male in crisis, and he was a beta male in crisis because he could not you know solve the problem, and he didn't know how to solve the problem because he didn't have adequate problem-solving skills. Because a lot of beta males, they don't understand that these problems are easy to solve once they break out of the codependent pattern that they get caught up in. Because usually in these back and forths, what happens is these white and Hispanic males on the job, what they want to do is attach an emotional hose to you. And what they want to do by going out here and taking your stuff and, and out of your office or messing with your computer or doing all sorts of foolishness is get you into a codependent back and forth where they get power in the relationship and then they wind up having you dancing around like a puppet on a string. And what happened was Anthony Farrell, as he wanted to cut the strings from the codependent puppet masters, took out a weapon, brought it to his facility, and used it to murder these individuals so that in an effort to take the power back in his life by destroying the lives of his tormentors. So this case of workplace bullying, as I see it, it fits again right in line with the pattern and profile I talked about in The Man Crisis because your Anthony Farrell was a man in crisis. He was a man who was a ticking time bomb. And sadly, the management at Molson Coors did not do a good job of trying to defuse this situation and trying to find a constructive way to deal with the issues between this longtime employee and his coworkers. Now, when I look at this situation from a critical perspective, I see how it could easily be solved. I mean, if Anthony Farrell is having issues with people at work, he should have been transferred to another department or these co-workers should have been transferred to another department or another facility because by transferring these individuals who are having this friction, what you're going to do is deal with it by sending one individual to another facility and another individual to another facility and that will cut down on the drama. The other thing that they could have done was try to mediate something where either these guys are not going to be on the same shifts with each other or they're going to be in different parts of the building away from each other so that they wouldn't be together to get into these issues at the workplace and the workplace could remain productive. And there would also be some sort of counseling for these individuals because clearly these individuals needed counseling because when I look at this whole situation, Again, Molson Coors didn't do a good job of managing this situation because for these men to escalate their behavior to the crisis level, this has to do with supervision not coming in and checking the dysfunction because beta males, they will participate in this type of dysfunctional back and forth until a stronger male authority figure comes in and shuts down all the drama. And this is something that bosses have to do. They have to shut down the drama because if you don't shut down the drama, it will escalate into workplace violence because your beta males, again, they don't know where the line is. They don't know where the boundaries are. And sadly, because your Anthony Farrell was pushed to the limit, he wound up, again, exploding in this rage. And sadly, six people wound up losing their lives as the result of a man in crisis not getting the help and support that he needed and not getting the counseling that he needed to help him overcome his numerous issues with his co-workers or help him deal with the, de the, the decline of his mental health as related to these numerous back and forth. Now, as somebody who has been bullied, again, in junior high school and high school, I know about this pattern of passive-aggressive back-and-forth behavior. And when you have immature individuals in the workplace who are in their 40s and their 50s participating in this behavior, again, it is a sign that these individuals have grown old, 
but they have not grown up, and sadly, they didn't understand that they are continuing to push this man to the with this extremely egregious behavior led led up to this man's mental health deteriorating and then eventually wound up to him simmering and boiling in anger and then eventually exploding in a rage that led to him taking their lives and taking his own life again this was a tragic situation where a man in crisis could have been saved had management stepped in and tried to find a way to solve the problems between these men again showing that your Molson Coors didn't know how to conflict resolve or problem solve for and they didn't help these beta males learn how to conflict resolve or problem solve because these men needed to learn those life skills and sadly they didn't learn those life skills at home and because they didn't learn those life skills at home they brought their dysfunction to the job and that dysfunction led to the loss of six lives at the Molson Coors facility in Milwaukee. If you want to learn more about the dysfunctional behaviors of males like Anthony Farrell and the individuals at the Molson Coors facility, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com. And in this book, you will learn the dysfunctional behaviors of beta males, what makes them ticking time bombs, and what makes them participate in a spectrum of violent behaviors like mass shootings. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, and my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available for the first time in paperback. Stop simping in the workplace. Men, learn what you need to know in order to protect your job from workplace predators with Stop Simping in the Workplace. Available in paperback at online booksellers everywhere.